Having been the world's best tennis player for 12 weeks, a winner of six Grand Slams, two Davis Cup titles, and three ATP finals, one would expect Boris Becker to have a comfortable life. However, that hasn't been the case lately. Known for his massive serves and iconic diving volleys on court, as well as for his charisma and beauty outside of it, Boris made some wrong decisions during his life which led to some very dark times, including bankruptcy and an incursion into jail. How could this happen to a professional? professional athlete of such a caliber. Well, sometimes when people start earning big figures, they lose control and common sense. So what happened to Boris's fortune worth $170 million fruit of prize money, endorsements and investments along the way? And how did he end up in jail? Let me explain. His success story began in 1985, when the grass season arrived. Nobody expected much from a 17-year-old teenager, but he would give a lot to talk about. He won his first ATP title at the Queen's club three weeks prior to Wimbledon. That victory set him at number 20 in the world, which didn't guarantee him a seated position at Wimbledon. However, somewhat unexpectedly, the 17-year-old ran through the whole draw at the All England Lawn Tennis Club and won the title, beating Kevin Curran in the final. He became the first unseated player to ever win the tournament, as well as the youngest ever champion, a record which still holds. Needless to say, this victory changed his life. Up until that point, he was still unsure sure about what his future in tennis would bring. Should it not be for him, he was determined to finish school, go to university, and get a proper degree. He was a very level-headed and focused teenager. However, life had a different plan for him. All of a sudden, he had become a worldwide sporting icon, especially in Germany. Upon his win at Wimbledon, he was paraded through the streets of his home country as if he was a famous actor, for instance. He revitalized Germany's population's interest in tennis. How would he not continue with his career? Throughout the following following years, he built an awesome tennis career, winning a second Wimbledon title in 1986, then a third one in 1989 when he also won the US Open. He then won the Australian Open in 1991 and 1996. Apart from those Grand Slams, he won the Davis Cup for Germany in 1988 and 1989 and the ATP Finals in 1988, 1992, and 1995. At some point of this ride, still very young, he stated that he was not playing for the money but for his love for the sport. He was donating a lot of money to charity and was already thinking about different projects for the future. Apparently, he was very keen on investments. As his career developed, his personal life became more and more public. In December 1993, still being an active player, Boris married German-American model and actress Barbara Feltis. This was a very criticized couple at the beginning, especially because of Barbara's mixed-race ancestry. However, as time passed by and it consolidated, it exemplified as a glamour couple. Whatever. Together they had two children. Noah Gabriel Becker, born in 1994, and Elias Baltazar Becker, born in 1999. However, that's as good as things got for Boris. Over the following years, especially once his career came to an end, everything seemingly started to go wrong. The first big controversy he was involved in was in the year 2000, when he had already retired. By then it was of public knowledge that his relationship with Barbara was not going well. Still, what happened was the absolute worst. One day, a fax was received at Becker's office in Munich. It had been sent by someone called Angela Ermakova, letting Boris know that he was about to become a father. Becker was initially hesitant about this and hired private detectives to follow Ermakova. In fact, he firstly denied everything and said that maybe she impregnated his DNA herself. However, he never denied having an affair with this woman. Eventually, he accepted paternity after a secret DNA test confirmed it. All of this was written in Becker's Life is Not a Game autobiography. Now, when did all of this happen? It was the year prior in 1999 when his wife was about to give birth to his second son. It happened in London after he lost in Wimbledon's fourth round to Pat Rafter. That night, he went out for some drinks with some friends and colleagues to London's Nobu restaurant. There, he met Angela Ermakova, a Russian waitress. As narrated in his autobiography, he followed Ermakova into the darkest corner of the restaurant, which happened to be the broom cupboard. After five minutes of small talk, things happened, and you all know the outcome. He later said, these were the most expensive five minutes of his life. And yeah, it makes sense. This situation not only hastened the split with Barbara, but brought financial issues as well. A divorce that could have been arranged in $2.5 million ended up costing him $14.4 million, as well as their property in Fisher Island, Florida, and the custody of their two sons due to multiple charges. Of course, it was all settled in court. 
Apart from that, he was demanded $5 million in child support for Anna, his newly born daughter. In fact, instead of winning like he did in his good old days, he kept on losing. He invested 1.5 million euros into a sports website, but it went bankrupt. Then he founded his own internet TV channel, Boris Becker TV, which didn't last long. Apart from that, several other projects failed, such as an organic food firm, the Boris Becker Business Tower in Dubai, and his own racket and apparel brand. He also tried to get involved in real estate, video production, and the oil and gas industry, but none of these worked. In fact, it was revealed that he might have lost up to $10 million from an investment he made in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. In spite of all these losses, and the fact that the money count was going down, he still lived at the same high standard as when he was a professional tennis player, as if he had big checks incoming every week. The worst problems, however, were yet to come. In 2002, he was caught making false tax statements in Germany. As many countries in Europe, Germany has a high personal income tax, 45% for top earners, which Becker was not willing to pay. However, as it is of public knowledge, people with a lot of money can afford to buy a property in Monaco, take residency there, and avoid paying those ridiculous taxes their countries of origin charge. One of the conditions to be considered a resident is that you must, reluctantly, physically reside there. And that's what Boris stated in his tax statements, that he lived in Monaco. But in 2002, after a lengthy investigation, it was discovered that he was in fact living in Munich. Therefore, he owed the German government 3.3 million Deutsche Marks. Authorities wanted to see him behind bars, but he managed to get away from a two-year sentence. He only had to pay a 500,000 euros fine. Since then, a lot of rumors have been going on about his financial status. However, it wasn't until 2017 that new revelations came out, displaying how bad his situation actually was. That year, he was declared bankrupt by the British court over an unpaid loan of nearly $5 million on his estate in Mallorca, which was reportedly lived in by squatters, and a further one $1.6 million personal loan with a 25% interest rate. Judging by what we've already mentioned, you might imagine that Boris was not going to accept responsibility. In fact, hear this out. His lawyers argued that he had diplomatic immunity in this bankruptcy case. Why? Well, they declared that Boris had been appointed as attaché for sports in the European Union by the Central African Republic, a country that he had never even visited. Now, why would this make him immune to his bankruptcy case? Because of Article 31 one in the Vienna Convention held in 1961. As a diplomat of the Central African Republic, he should be exempt from bankruptcy proceedings. However, in response to this argument by Becker's lawyers, the foreign minister of the Central African Republic stated that Boris was not an official diplomat, and what's more, the role he cited didn't even exist. As if this wasn't serious enough, he also added that the passport that Becker had presented was one from a batch stolen in 2014. Therefore, this appeal generated even more problems for the German, who was forced to sell his properties and auction his trophies and memorabilia from his glorious days. The issue escalated even more when he was found to have transferred a lot of money to both his ex-wives. Yes, he got married again in 2009 and divorced in 2018, after he was declared bankrupt. This was a move to hide that money from creditors. Moreover, he failed to disclose a property in Germany, a bank loan for 825,000 euros, and shares of a tech company. For all these misconducts, Becker received four separate charges under Great Britain's Insolvency Act. This time, he would not be able to avoid prison. He was given a two-and-a-half-year sentence. Ironically, he was first put behind bars in Wandsworth Prison in southwest London, just a few kilometers away from the place that had seen him emerge and become a global star. If only he had managed himself in a better way. He was then moved to Huntercombe Prison in Oxfordshire, before being released in December 2022, eight months into his sentence. Upon being released, he was deported from the UK. After that experience, which he described as brutal and very different to what is shown in movies, Boris little by little returned to his normal life, and as it couldn't be any other way, he got involved in tennis once again. After all, his passion for the game will always be there. He has always been involved in commentating like he did before as well as coaching. After having coached Novak Djokovic for two years between 2014 and 2016, he returned to coaching duties in Holger Rune's box for a few months in 2023. It's safe to say say that, seemingly, Becker's life has taken a turn for the better since he came out of jail. Still, one can ignore the fact that he wasted an incredible amount of money and managed himself very poorly in various aspects of his life. Most of all, hopefully it serves as an example as to how not to manage success. Luckily, we don't see scenarios like this very often in the tennis world.
world, but it's worth being aware of these situations, even if we are not tennis players. If you enjoyed this video, check out the channel for more content and subscribe so as not to miss any of the upcoming ones. See you!